So how soon will Russian roads look like this? One of the most frequent requests I received on my channel over the last year has been to make a video on the Russian car market, as some people believe this is where Western sanctions have hit the hardest. Well, let's find out. Armed with my wife and my not-so-hidden camera, we went to the biggest car dealership in Moscow as undercover shoppers. The price tag for it is a whopping 3 million rubles, which is uh, around $38,000. It's Believe me, what these unsuspecting dealership employees told me was a far cry from the sugar-coated narrative spun in both the Russian and Western media. I also interviewed one of my subscribers who just bought a new Chinese crossover to replace his wrecked Mercedes. Something that many Russians might be forced to do given how fast Chinese cars are making inroads in the Russian market. And of course, I couldn't pass up the chance to get inside a new Russian car released in 2023 that looks strikingly similar to a mid-range Chinese crossover. What really, you know, uh, grinds my gears is the fact that it costs an arm and a leg to get this car here compared to its price back in China. Buckle up for the unfiltered truth on Real Reporter. All right, I think it's time for you to meet my car, a 2012 Opel Astra that has certainly seen better days. You know, I got this car when we had a kid and there are a lot of memories associated with this old beater. However, the issue of buying a new vehicle has been a long time coming. And I remember that I first thought that it's time to upgrade in 2020, but the pandemic threw a wrench in car production and prices went through the roof. And I thought, well, all right, you know, I'll wait this one out. Big mistake, because prices have been skyrocketing ever since. And now with sanctions and everything, getting a decent car uh, for a reasonable price in Russia, it's like searching for a needle in a haystack. In 2022, only 690,000 new cars found owners in Russia, marking a dramatic 60% plunge from the previous year. This has made 2022 the most catastrophic year in the modern history of the Russian auto industry. This is what a busting street in Moscow looks like during the day now. I mean, it's a stretch to say that uh, Moscow's roads look different from what they did a year ago uh, when sanctions were imposed. Uh, when cruising around, it doesn't feel like there are fewer cars. And to be honest with you, traffic is still a madhouse. However, the types of cars on the roads have begun to change. Out of the 60 car brands that were officially represented in Russia before the war and sanctions, only 14 remain standing. And guess what? Among these 14 survivors, 11 are from China. When it comes to new, officially sold vehicles, the Russian market is now 78% Chinese. I remember when Chinese cars was this catch-all term people used without specifying brands. Um, you would say, my friend got a Chinese car, as opposed to, my friend got a BMW or Mercedes or Chevy. Uh, no one really knew how to pronounce the names of uh, Chinese cars. Is it Gili or Jili? Is it Haval? Haval? However, things are changing now in Russia, and people are starting to get a handle on various Chinese car brands and are no longer painting them all with the same brush. The car dealership we've come to is one of the oldest in Moscow. It used to specialize in selling high-end Western brands, but judging by the signs outside, it looks like their business strategy is shifting gears. Inside, though, we were in for a surprise. Despite the sanctions and big talk about new Western cars being unavailable in Russia, this place boasts shiny new BMWs and sleek Mercedeses. All the vehicles are labeled used, but as a spiffed-up salesman told us, this is just a facade. 
Значит, на эти фразы не, напис... не смотрите, то, что написано, то, что написано с пробегом, это все машины новые. То есть там пробег, да, есть, он там 20 километров, но mm -hmm. это как на любой стандартной машине. Ah. Вот и все. Our jaws dropped even further when we looked at the price tags. A 2023 BMW X7 goes for over 20 million rubles or around $265,000. A new Mercedes-Benz S350 goes for around 17 million rubles or $210,000. Ouch! До начала всех известных событий, mm -hmm. 3 миллиона за 2,5 совершенно спокойно можно было купить BMW и хорошую BMW. Сейчас, к сожалению, конъюнктура рынка поменялась в связи с известными событиями. Let me know how much these high-end models might cost in your country. All right, so basically we're told that uh, we can afford a new BMW and we better look elsewhere. We were politely advised to check out the used car section and were overwhelmed by the selection. Here you have everything from run-of-the-mill dead cars to a flashy 2015 Dodge Challenger and this red 2005 Ferrari. And if you think no one buys these cars, I literally saw a guy driving off the dealership lot in a gleaming sports car that he'd just purchased. In our price range, however, there wasn't much to choose from. Let's take, for instance, this uh, 2019 uh, Skoda with over 90,000 kilometers on it. The price tag for it is a whopping 3 million rubles, which is uh, around $38,000. I don't know, I think it's daylight robbery. So I gathered up my courage and walked straight into the sales team's den, revealing my bold plan. Trading my old Opel for a solid 500,000 rubles, $6,200, and top it off with another million and a half, or $18,500 out of my pocket. Truth be told, I don't have that kind of money, but from what I gather, 10 million rubles or $25,000 is the bare minimum for something better than my old Opel these days. Surprisingly, the salesperson didn't seem particularly impressed with this amount and instead of showing us a myriad of options, simply directed us to a computer where we could handle the task ourselves. Our choices were meager. We discovered a relatively new but well-worn Renault, a low-mileage but pricey Kia Rio, and an 11-year-old BMW. Yeah. We were about to bail and go check out the Chinese brands in the next section, but then we saw this. A 2018 Jaguar with 78,000 kilometers on it that would only cost me $18,500 plus my old car. A Jaguar. Ah, I mean, it looks fancy. All leather. Ah. You know, I don't know, maybe it's a trap or something because I didn't expect that a Jaguar would cost significantly less than, say, uh, a BMW or uh, a Mercedes. I always thought you know, these are high-end brands that, you know, should cost a lot. So, honey, do you like Jaguar? <laughs> <laughs> this car doesn't come cheap, of course, but in the grand scheme of things, this doesn't seem like a bad deal at all, unless there is something they're not telling me. There's been many reports about Western car parts being very expensive or hard to get ever since sanctions hit. This very well might be the case for Jaguar, which has always been a niche brand in Russia. At this dealership, however, I was told that there is absolutely nothing to worry about. The issue of spare parts is yet another example of how everything might be twisted in the media. If you read Western sources, you'll be told that there are no spare parts in Russia, period. If you read Russian sources, you'll be told that almost everything has been sorted out through parallel or great imports. So where does the truth lie? 
I actually have a personal experience to share. Something was off with my brakes a few months ago when I had a stop at a random repair shop run by a friendly Georgian guy who happened to be a big Stalin fan. Amidst this unique setting, he identified the issue in no time. So I'm gonna need new brake pads. These ones are done. I went to a random auto parts store fearing I'd either have to pay a small fortune for new brake pads or leave empty handed. To my surprise, none of those worries were justified as they gave me a set of brand new Belgian brake pads. Or maybe they weren't Belgian, but they work just fine. I got my new brake pads for $50 and then uh, the work cost me uh, 65 US dollars. So altogether it came to 110, 115 dollars. Uh, I actually thought the work would cost, uh, it would be cheaper. Anyway, let me know how much you would pay for something like this uh, in your country. The truth lies somewhere in between, I suppose. Spare parts have certainly risen in price, but it's not like sanctions have caused total Carmageddon on Russian roads. Besides, Western car dealers haven't entirely left the country and are still assisting with car maintenance and repair. Anyway, the sales guy smelled blood when I showed interest in the Jaguar and didn't want to let me go to the Chinese section next door. Still, I was adamant about seeing what the Chinese had to offer since I'd heard a lot of positive comments about their new cars from people I know, including one of my subscribers in Moscow. Alexander's parents were very generous and bought him a Mercedes, which unfortunately was badly damaged in a car accident soon after it was purchased. На всю жизнь осталась вот эта вот памятка, что не надо, пожалуйста, обгонять по правой полосе. The repair bill have come to a whopping 3 million 200 rubles or $40,000. That's more than 70% of what they paid for the car. So the family decided enough with the pricey European toys. И, соответственно, первым, первая мысль какая? Нам нужна машина, которую можно легко починить. У нас было два варианта. Это Kia, потому что они до сих пор возят и запчасти, и машины, редко, но метко. Ну, соответственно, Китай. А в Китае был выбор очень огромный. Exit, Haval, Geely. Почему остановились на Geely? Потому что я однажды эту машину в каршеринге взял, и она мне просто очень понравилась. Ну, первый день вот ты сел за руль, какие были ощущения? Вот? Неожиданность. Я искал подвох. И так продолжалось, наверное, где-то неделю. Понял, что подвоха никакого нет. Просто наконец-то сделали хорошую машину. Вообще меняется, да, репутация китайских машин в России теперь? Сейчас, да. Ну что, возили 15 лет назад, что сейчас? Это космическая разница. Ну неужели все равно Джили лучше, чем Мерседес? После Мерседеса сложно сесть в любую другую машину. Тут уже больше идет дело о том, что тебе нужно комфортное, удобное, динамичное, так как я молодой. Средства передвижения. И машина за те деньги, которые она предлагается, то есть она это дает тебе. Uh, the Chinese have definitely come a long way in, uh, in car production. Uh, I mean, just judging by how these cars look. I mean, they don't look cheap to me. I don't know. Look at this one. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice looking car, really. Uh, I don't know about the quality, uh, but uh, just, you know, visually, these cars are very easy on the eyes. Inside, everything also looks pretty cool. Oh, все в электронике. Да, то есть по опциям, в принципе, все подогревы, электроприводы, адаптивный круиз-контроль, датчик слепых зон. Apparently, new Chinese cars are loaded with all the latest bells and whistles, like a 360-degree parking camera, 
and a sophisticated autopilot that allows you to let go of the steering wheel while safely staying in the lane. But the most important thing, these vehicles are way more wallet friendly than their Western counterparts. Ну вот там, правда, ребята сказали, что типа, да вот тебе зачем тебе китайская машина, типа они там через год пожалеешь, она сломается. Гарантия на этот автомобиль 7 лет либо 200 тысяч километров, на данный автомобиль 5 лет либо 150. Also, the Chinese are aggressively cutting prices, solidifying their grip on the lucrative market that's been long dominated by American and European brands. For instance, the base price of this 2023 Cherry 7 Pro Max is 3,039,000 rubles or $38,000. But with all the discounts for trade-ins and credit incentives, the price drops to 2,650,000 rubles or $33,000. This shiny new Exceed SUV, which is Cherry's premium brand, goes for 4 million rubles or $50,000. With all the discounts applied, the price comes down to 2,800,000 rubles or $35,000. Not bad, huh? And there is the funny part. When I casually mentioned my desire for a Jaguar, the salesman in the Chinese section had a completely different take than his colleagues who deal with European cars. Just Jaguar, on а что обслуживание? Они говорят, что все нормально с обслуживанием. Стоимость запасных частей, те же колодки. Они говорят, да не, не, с запчастями все нормально, там что-то что что нормально. нормально. Представительства нет, так как автомобиль стоил изначально очень дорого, у него очень дорогие запчасти. I also couldn't resist checking out a brand new Russian car released in 2023, the Moskvich. I mean, it's not 100% Russian. Basically, the new Moskvich is a Chinese crossover Jag JS4, assembled at a Moscow auto plant formerly owned by Renault. The French auto giant sold the factory to Moscow's government for a symbolic one ruble in 2022, leaving around 5,000 employees uncertain about their future. During the mobilization campaign, I even met a former Renault employee at a Moscow enlistment center who said he would earn more in the army than on the factory's assembly line. But the authorities managed to keep the majority of the factory's workforce employed by quickly switching production from French to Chinese models. The use of the well-known Moskvich car brand is mainly symbolic. The primary goal was to save the factory from shutting down rather than develop an entirely new vehicle from scratch. The fact that this is a Chinese car reassembled in Russia doesn't really bother me that much, but what really, you know, uh, grinds my gears is the fact that it costs an arm and a leg to get this car here compared to its price back in China. In China, a Jag JS4 starts at around $19,000. In Russia, a Moskvich goes for $25,000 or $22,000 if all the discounts are applied. Not так получается выгодно. Сейчас я был в Чере, там он стоит 4 миллиона получается, а а со всеми скидками меньше 3. Вопрос финансирования и поддержки от представительства. У нас поддержка по таким суммам. Of course, sanctions have had a tremendous effect on the Russian auto market. People now face higher prices and fewer options when shopping for a new vehicle. As with any restrictions, it's a two-way street though. Western car makers have also suffered financial losses as they've quit one of the biggest car markets in Europe, leaving entire factories behind. It looks like Chinese manufacturers are the only ones reaping benefits. Amidst all the sanctions and the fierce race between Russia and the West, they've smoothly slipped into the winner's lane in Russia's car market without even having to shift into top gear. As for me, I decided to hold off on buying a new car for now. It looks like my trusty old Opel and I will be hitting the road together for at least another year. And with your support for a few new parts here and there, we'll be cruising along just fine.